My name is Ming Xiao. Um, I'm a professor of civil engineering at Penn State, and this is my 19th year as a faculty member. As the uh, civil engineer and educator, and uh, I uh, teach and study soils uh, as a foundation material that supports civil infrastructure. Uh, and permafrost is probably the uh, most challenging material uh, to understand and uh, to study. And uh, the permafrost uh, uh, has a massive ice, and uh, some can be uh, ice rich and uh, very heterogeneous. That means you know, the uh, permafrost characteristics uh, change uh, from one location to the other. And uh, it also, uh, the permafrost constantly changes with the uh, changing temperature uh, and uh, the climate. So I ask myself, what I can do uh, as a civil engineer, and uh, you know, also considering that uh, the uh, intricate uh, interactions of the permafrost uh, with uh, the natural environments and with the society, and uh, the importance of it, that prompted me to study permafrost, and uh, hopefully we can understand better how it changes and how can we uh, design and construct the civil infrastructures that rest on permafrost that can be resilient. As an individual, and I know, you know so little and can do uh, so little about uh, the permafrost research, so I collaborate with others. For example, in, in one of the uh, projects funded by the National Science Foundation, Nap in the New Arctic, I work with the, uh, uh, Dr. Vladimir Romanovsky and uh, Dr. Dmitry Nikoski from the uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks. I learned a lot uh, from them about uh, permafrost uh, about the climate change, about uh, the uh, natural and the environments uh, in the Arctic. In another uh, project uh, funded by the National Science Foundation, Signals in the Soil program, and we're using the uh, distributed uh, acoustic sensing, DAS, and distributed temperature sensing, DTS, technologies uh, to monitor uh, the uh, permafrost. And uh, we collaborated with the, uh, Eileen Martin, a professor uh, from Colorado School of Mine, and uh, Chi Yuanju, uh, a professor from Penn State. And uh, they are geophysicists and uh, uh, experts uh, using uh, DAS and DTS. So our team uh, together uh, installed two kilometer long uh, DAS and DTS cables uh, in the Pomfort Tundra in Ogavik, Alaska. And uh, we also uh, work with uh, Dr. Uh, Ann Jensen, a social scientist who has decades of uh, working and living experiences uh, in the Arctic so that we want to make sure that we install the uh, fiber optic cables uh, in the right way. So with that data, that we can uh, better understand how the permafrost would change with the space and time, so that uh, we can design uh, a more resilient civil infrastructure. You know, I'm involved with uh, U.S. Permafrost Association. Last year, and uh, my team from Penn State conducted a, a, a week-long uh, STEM uh, summer camp for middle school students uh, in Ugabic, and we did some lots of fun activities. So this year, we're trying to hold another summer camp for high school students. Just we want to pick their interest in the uh, science, engineering, mathematics, technology, and also uh, connect the science or uh, the STEM with their own culture, so that they can have a sense about what the kind of career that they would have uh, in STEM and that can also help their own community. So I think that's really important, really to educate uh, the next generation, and not only within Alaska. And uh, so we're also uh, doing the uh, STEM activities in the middle schools and elementary schools uh, for me uh, in Pennsylvania, so that uh, you know, uh, kids and students from other places can also understand the importance of, uh, of the Arctic, the communities, the uh, natural environment, how they change, what the challenges they have, so that maybe they can also grow up to be scientists, engineers that are working for Arctic uh, resiliency. Well, I'd like to add two more points, and one is a collaboration. The uh, permafrost is so complex, the changes in the Arctic and uh, is multifaceted. Uh, we, as, our, as researchers uh, in uh, natural sciences, social sciences, and engineering, we're doing that, and we recognize the, the importance, uh, but I think that's not enough. So we really need to work uh, uh, together collaboratively more uh, so that we can understand this complex system and then find uh, solutions. And uh, the other collaboration is uh, across sectors, from uh, uh, industry, 
uh, academia and agencies uh, from the uh, you know, local, state, federal levels, uh, that definitely we as a society are not doing enough. So I think really we need to work together from research to practice to policy making so that you know, we as a society can address all the challenges uh, in the Arctic. The second I would say is the uh, sense of urgency that uh, we uh, as humans uh, and really are at uh, the uh, crossroad uh, of, uh, of the changes for the next generations that we as researchers uh, need to take actions and we as industry and, uh, need to take actions and uh, as a government uh, agency that we also need to take actions. Actions that really lead to you know, the uh, resiliency and the sustainable uh, Arctic and, and, and the environment. Thank you.